In this GeoMap app tutorial, we'll learn how to load some of the many grids that are already built into GeoMap app. There are three ways to load one of the many grids that are already built into GeoMap app. The first way is to use the grid dialog function in the toolbar, located here. This function provides a shortcut to a number of the global grids built into GeoMap app. The second way is to use the profile function here. This is also a shortcut and provides access to the global multi-resolution topography dataset that comprises the GeoMap app base map. And finally, we can use the base maps menu located here to access the full range of global and regional grids that are built into GeoMap app. We'll look at each of these access methods in turn. Let's start by looking at the grid dialog shortcut. When we click the grid dialog function in the toolbar, the first thing that happens is we see that the global multi-resolution topography dataset has been loaded. The layer manager and grid dialog windows also appeared, but these may be parked in the computer taskbar. In the grid dialog window, if we look in the drop down menu here, we see a list of other global grids that we can access. For example, let's choose the gravity free air anomaly grid from Samuel and Smith, this item here. After the grid is loaded, we can use the grid dialog window here and the layer manager window here to manipulate the grid as we've seen in other tutorials. And if we move these windows out of the way, like this, we can see the wonderful lithospheric flexure mode along the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain here. Next, we'll use the profile tool located here to load the default global multi-resolution topographic dataset. To do this, we click once on the toolbar icon, and when the grid is finished loading, we again see the layer manager and the global grids window. Because we loaded a grid using the profile function, the cursor is now active, ready to take a profile. So we can click the start and end positions and a profile will appear, like this. And more information on the profiling tool can be found in the profiling tutorial. We can also take a profile across one of the other grids that are also listed in the grid dialog menu here. So if we wish to take a profile across, say, the gravity free air anomaly grid, we choose it. And as soon as the grid has been loaded, we can take a profile like this. The third way to access the built in grids is via the base maps menu here. When we click on the base maps menu, we'll select the tear off option, the top item here, and this produces a navigation window that's a bit easier to use than the cascading menus. For example, to find the gravity grid that we loaded in the earlier part of this example, we'd go under global grids, gravity anomalies, and there we see the gravity grid. And if we hit the OK button, the grid will load. Instead though, let's load one of the regional scale grids. We'll close the global grids drop down and open the regional grids. And let's look at the regional scale bathymetric grids that are available. And let's have a look in the lakes folder, for example. Here we see an item that lists a bathymetric grid at two meter horizontal resolution for Crater Lake in Oregon. Let's select that by clicking once on the grid name and then hitting the OK button. After the grid has loaded, we again see the layer manager and the grid dialog window. And when we move these windows out of the way, we can see the grid. As with any other grid in GeoMap app, we can use the functionality of the grid dialog window and the layer manager to manipulate the grid, and examples of this are given in the other tutorials on grids. 
More information on GeomapApp can be found at www.geomapapp.org.